Hello, this is William from 222 Productions, and I am here to talk to you about the Los Angeles qualifiers from American Ninja Warrior Season 10 in approximately 20 minutes or less, starting now. So, this was the big Jurassic World night, uh, basically where they did the tie-in with Jurassic World uh, Fallen Kingdom. You know, you got you to go see it uh, once again. This was filmed at Universal Studios. They started with uh, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. They played a clip from uh, Jurassic World. The clip itself, it's like, it wasn't anything special. It's like, it's it was a lot of stuff that I had seen before in other previews. So, it, you know, kind of... It was kind of just there. Um, they, uh, they, I like, I like the entrance to make it look like the gate to Jurassic Park. I thought that was clever, and uh, the animatronics, like just, yeah, you know, the, 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 how far they've, they've gone, uh, it just makes it all really cool. I really like that stuff. But uh, as for the course itself, of course, you got the floating steps. Uh, then you got an obstacle called uh, the jumper cables, uh, which is, um, I believe, it's called the grab bag and Slimmer Ninja War. Basically, you got to hold on these two uh, independent uh, poles that are swinging. Uh, you got to swing, grab onto a bag, and then you swing onto the platform. Kind of, the, the whole name jumper cable is kind of weird, but yeah. Then it was the spinning bridge, or as I like to call it, the cannonball. Uh, <laughs> uh, followed by the return of the sky hooks, which was a uh, you know, good obstacle. Uh, then the doorknob drop. Uh, basically, you have a series of doorknobs, some spin, some don't. got to make your way across, and then up at about a 45 degree angle. When you get to the top, they then drop. Um... And they drop rather quickly. Then you gotta turn around, do a 180, and do that again. And then you're gonna drop again, and you're gonna do a dismount. So uh, then, of course, you got the dual warped walls. And it was kind of obvious that this was filmed before Dallas because uh, uh, there was a few things different with the mega wall. Um, it didn't have the colored lines. It had two white lines, but they weren't numbered or colored. And this was the only one where the warped wall actually lit up depending on which one uh, you chose uh, to a different color. Uh, they stopped doing that after they filmed that one. So they started off with Zanique Lovett. And um, admittedly, that, that had me a little bit worried at first. Because, you know, first first runs uh, tend not to do well. Um, but she actually she actually made the doorknob drop in, uh, and failed. Uh, she she went out on the first uh, drop. Um, it was a solid run. Um a lot of we saw a lot of people kind of kind of kind of fall on on the doorknob drop that was kind of one of the things um relatively early clear for this episode in Thomas Coffrin, who was a uh, a firefighter who um who essentially helped save uh his house of his parents um by himself by kind of just throwing water as the embers got close to his house and like any sort of liquid he can get a hold of um but yeah, that was uh, that was good. It was good that he see him clear. He he did well. Uh, one of I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Bijan from Iron Chair Ninja Podcast. Uh, he competed on the show. He got a he got a fast forward segment. He went out on the jumper cables, but you know it was good to see him there. I uh, you know had a little had a little fun on Twitter and um, uh, but I was genuinely laughing when they put the uh, the Iron Chair Ninja Podcast logo because you know that's uh. That's millions of people giving uh, extra exposure to. So, congratulations on that. I'm sure, I'm sure Rich and Bijan are both uh, very happy that they uh, got some some extra advertising out of their for their podcast. Um, Kevin Bull uh, surprisingly went out on the doorknob drop uh, on the second half of that obstacle. I was uh, very surprised by that, but also. Um, um, one other thing I was surprised about was just like uh, how unassuming they were in the editing of uh, Sean Bryan, because like they showed him halfway through and he ended up getting a, a fast time and he cleared. He he failed the mega wall. Um, they did another special on uh, Tiana Weiberly about her mother. Uh, she failed the second drop of uh, the doorknob drop. They really kind of emphasized the whole like you know hasn't made it past the fifth obstacle thing. Um, they did a whole thing with Grant McCartney about his family. It's it's really depressing to hear Grant's uh, story about his family and stuff. Honestly, um, he I felt bad for him because he failed the final dismount of the doorknob drop while when his foot dipped into the water and like you can tell that he can tell right away that like he messed up. So I felt bad for him. Um, 
I know Nicholas Coolridge got fast forward, which is uh, not surprising because it's uh, unfortunately a, a running theme in that he gets fast forward. Um, so uh, one of the things that uh, let's see. Oh, Selena Lanyell, uh from uh, the Towers of Power team from Ninja vs. Ninja slash Teenager Warrior. Uh, best, her best performance ever made it to the doorknob drop. Good for her. I was really glad to see that. Um, I was surprised that they fast forward Josh Levin. He cleared again. That was that was good. He was um, a bit worrying just the fact that he got fast forward because he was kind of my pick to go all the way. Um, a bit of a surprise there also. Natalie Duran. They did a they did a thing about her getting her license, but she. Fail the jumper cables, and she's out. That's it. That's the end of her season. Very, very quick airtime for uh, for Natalie. Um, but then they showed Nick Hansen uh, right after that, and they they talked about how like it's hard for him to train in Alaska because like getting supplies is uh, very expensive in Alaska, and so he generally uses driftwood. Um, that's just because like transportation costs money. And he is he is legit the first person to get up the mega wall. I think a lot of people were surprised by that. I was surprised by that. He was surprised by that, quite frankly. Congratulations to him. $10,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, one thing, uh, who one person, though, who I was expecting to make it to the top of uh, the mega wall was Flip Rodriguez. But he ended up going out on the second drop of the doorknob drop uh, no profile which i thought was kind of weird but i think the biggest reason why he failed one thing i remember is that when he got to the top he had his hands crossed they weren't like this they were like this and i think that was a mistake on on his part um i think he sort of he he miscalculated uh that sort of thing by the way by the way i just remember so like with sean bryan I forgot to mention this in the beginning. The pr- the the intro that they had for American Ninja Warrior this particular episode was so bad. Everyone was doing like all these like dinosaur puns and stuff. Like I know Nick Hansen said like he's a uh, you know he's not about Jurassic. He's about the Ice Age and stuff. And it was just so oh my god oh the dinosaur puns and themes i just i couldn't stand it but they had this hilariously bad segment where sean bryan and david campbell are running from a green screen of a dinosaur stampede (laughs) and it's just i mean it's so weird that they chose them because like because like david campbell got fast forward he cleared which is great to see and sean bryan he he got no profile piece just started halfway through his run um so that was weird too. Brian Kretsch, glad to see him clear. A little surprised that he had some difficulty getting to the top of the wart wall, um, but he still made it. So that's that's good to hear. Um, I think probably the biggest surprise was that the fastest run night was from Brian Rambo, who is an urban gardener, finished in less than two and a half minutes. Um, so I think it's it's nice to see a, a rookie or a, a newcomer. He might not necessarily be a rookie, uh, but a newcomer. Um, Make it to the top of the charts. Uh, that's always nice to see. And then uh, they finished the episode with Adam Rail, who was the second person that night to get the ten thousand dollar Mega Wall top prize. Um, this profile piece, I feel like they were really kind of playing up that he could be the next person to win it all. Um, so kind of curious to see because I'm I am I'm fairly certain that this aired before they filmed. Vegas, so they can't know for sure that that is the case. But really, really glad to see him do well. He uh, he tends to do well on a lot of these uh, uh, outside of A and W courses. Uh, like I know he keeps winning uh, Wolfpack Ninja Tour. He I think he just you know he does well in Rockford. Um, I believe he did well in it now. Yeah, he made a stage two, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, but um. Yeah, that's that's all I had to say about uh, the LA qualifiers. Um, they ended with uh, you know Bryce and um, uh, what's his name, Chris Pratt. Um, they were like, oh yeah, we had a good time. It's like, you know, you know, it was um, honestly like I'd rather have like a themed sponsorship episode rather than an obstacle sponsorship. Like the whole Ninjago role, I thought was dumb, but like having. Having like you know an episode sponsored by by uh, by Jurassic World, I thought was better than 
like say the Ninjago roll. So anyway, so uh, for this one, uh, we had 100 people take on the course, and of those 100 people, um, uh, we saw 12 full runs and two that were started mid progress and 29 fast forwards and 10 clears were shown of the 10 clears that actually happened. Uh, also worth mentioning, looking at the full results, um, jumper cables and uh, took out a lot of people. And doorknob drop took out uh, a lot of people as well. Those were like the two, the two big killers. Not surprising, because um, they both seem like very difficult obstacles. Jump cable being like, you know, uh, basically kind of like a one shot obstacle, and doorknob drop just being a high difficulty. But here are your here are your people moving on to the LA finals. We had ten finishers: Brian Rambo, Nicholas Coolidge, Thomas Coffrin, Josh Levin, Adam Rail, who got the Mega Wall ten thousand dollar prize, Spencer Clapp, Sean Bryan, David Campbell, Nick Hansen, who also got the Mega Wall ten thousand dollar prize, and Brian Critch. And the remaining twenty people of the top thirty all failed the doorknob drop. That would be Kevin Bull, Jesse. Orange Shine, Flip Rodriguez, Scott Wilson, Jeremy Rivette, Davon Hancox, Derek Miyamoto, Anthony Trucks, Tiana Warmberly, Tyler Schlorf, Joe Mardovich, Brock Taylor, Grant McCartney, Austin Siebert, Ruben Ariano, Gabe Hurtado, Verde Benson, Nick Nelson, Wesley Silvestri, and Brian Neal. And to round out the top five women uh, rankings... We had Zinik Vlavet, Zanina, Selena Laniel, and Anna Shoemaker, who all fold, failed the doorknob drop. And we had Samantha Bush, who failed the skyhooks. And that are my entire thoughts on the L.A. qualifier. What did you think of the L.A. qualifiers? Did you, did you like the, the Jurassic Park tie-in? Did you like the doorknob dra- grasper? Was there anything you didn't like? Let me know. And if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, I will be talking to you about the Miami qualifiers in the next episode of my AW 10 Reviews. But until then, see you, everyone.